Am I alive? Finally. <laughs> yeah, it says I'm finally uploading. Um, I tried streaming from a different location today, and it just didn't work out. The internet's not strong enough there, so. I'm, uh, I moved back here. I got a noise filter on, so, um, you can't hear anything, <laughs> but I, I hope it's all working out. I got background music today. Looks like it's playing, so, um, today, today I'm going over some heavy math, some heavy math. This is the, my namesake, the heavy side function, um, gonna be quite involved. Um, <laughs> I'm managing a lot of windows and I only have one monitor, so it'll take some, some skill for sure. Yeah, um, I can't wait to do this. I, I upped my bit rate, um, <laughs> a higher than it recommended me to. So, <laughs> so we're going to see how that works. Um, it actually, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and it looks like it's it's unstable. So, <laughs> so I, I think I'm gonna put it back down for next time. Um, actually, the, the other bit rate didn't seem like it was that bad. I think I think it's because I'm mostly I'm mostly not doing like games, though at least not yet. So, yeah, I had a. I mean, it, it takes longer than you think to set everything up. Like, I thought I had a late start because I thought I could just set it up, like, really fast. But I had to open all these programs and sign into everything. And it, it surprisingly, it takes a lot longer than you think. Um, kind of, I used to, like, scoff at, at streamers who were like, oh, my job is so hard. But... Yeah, it, it's surprisingly, you know, it's surprising. All right, well, I suppose we should we should move to the other to the other room. <laughs> yeah, it's about time. All right, I, now that I turned off the the face tracking, <laughs> my bit rate just went like doubled. So that's interesting. All right, so let's see what I want to do first. Yeah, first, this is he where is it? this is heavy side. You can go look him up yourself. Um, he's an English mathematician and he's a a genius actually. So he came from just humble beginnings, and then he rose through the ranks and he just became one of the most widely renowned like mathematicians ever basically um so he was into like uh the telephone industry like uh, electrical lines and all those sorts of problems so he was like laying i don't think he was laying electrical lines but he was like helping with that industry and so a lot of his expertise deals with like um telephone transmissions and electrical transmissions and stuff. And so his work was very important in the work of of math, but also physics. So he um his that we get into latex now. So, let's see if it works. Here it is. Yeah. So this is your, um, this is how you make scientific papers. This is latex. This is the program that everyone uses. So, this, I don't have much written here, but we can do some stuff here. Um, so the way you write like a formula, like let's say I want to do the integral, so I'd write it between these like these dollar signs, and I go like integral zero to infinity.
of fraction 1 over x squared. Like that. Oh, I forgot my dx. Never forget your dx. Or your teacher will bite your head off. Alright, let's remove that. Let's see, is it is it coming through on the stream? Ah. My audio coming through. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming through. I think I'm like peaking a little bit. Um anyway. Yeah, so this over here. Actually. So if I were to go here. Yeah, so this is my PDF. And so it produces like these PDFs. And um, it's a really nice program to use. Um, so the fundamental equation, the equations that Heaviside got famous for were... Okay, well, I guess I should explain a little bit about sort of his thesis. So he saw math as more of like a... So he, he was into like operational calculus. So that means that so a an integral and a derivative are like transformations that you do onto an equation. Do you know how you have like an equation and it's like always like a equals b or x equals this? Well, a transformation is not just an equality, it actually transforms an equation into a different equation. And so heavy side was was into that. Yeah. Um, and so that's what that's how he saw calculus and that's what sort of made him um, famous. So a lot of times you'll hear mathematicians talk about like operations or performing operations or well a lot of that starts with him. So the the, the transform actually transforms an equation into like something else. And so the Laplace transform is related to heavy size work and it's very it's a very important one. Um, it's how you solve differential equations basically it's very similar to a Fourier transform but it's like it was like discovered independently so it's a little bit weird like it doesn't have the same um, so in a Fourier transform this would be wait is it picking up my mouse yeah it is okay in the Fourier transform it, this would be like e to the negative i as t and so This guy was the real deal. So, this is, oh, yeah, here, here we go. These are the, um, the telegrapher's equations. This is what Heaviside solved that got him, like, famous in the first place. So, this is a series of, um, differential equations that is, like, here they are. They're, um, a series of connected partial differential equations and these are notoriously difficult to solve like um you see them sometimes in various problems they're like it's kind of a common thing and they're notoriously difficult there um you can solve them i mean heaviside did but actually i think before he solved it like some when he was like a young man some serious mathematicians were like declaring that it was impossible they're like, oh man, no one, nobody could ever do this. Um, so, I, I believe I have seen these before. Um, no, I've seen a simplified version of these. I've seen like without this this term over here. Is it picking up my mouse? Oh, it's picking up in like the wrong location. <laughs> so like, yeah. So without these terms on the end here. Um, that you can solve, but yeah, so the solution looks very involved, <laughs> to be honest, like, but I, I guess he figured it out, so he's a, he's a brilliant guy. Um, but basically the heavy side function itself is actually kind of an ironic name to a certain extent, because 
I can show you what it looks like. Let's pull up GIMP. Let's pull down latex. Oh, where's GIMP? Oh, shoot. Hold on. I have to like... Hmm. I'm gonna... Hmm. Is there a way to do it where it's like... Wait, can I like edit here without it showing on stream? <laughs> it's all a, a learning process. I've definitely learned a lot today. Like, setting this whole thing up was very cumbersome and I definitely learned a lot from it. So I don't think this is showing up. Yeah. But I can just go over here to like to GIMP, right? There it is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So here we go. This here's my GIMP. Um I will make it smaller for you. And I'll go into GIMP. Oh, look, look at me. I'm drawing. You can draw anything. Um, so the heavy side function, it looks like this. It's like a step function. It looks like that. Um, and this is down here is go to a different color. Oh man, this is so much better than that other one I tried to do. <laughs> I'm not making the axes in blue just because. I feel like it. Oh, I should manage my layers better. Um, so anyway, this down here is like zero. Hold on. This down here is zero. And this down here, this up here is one. So it's from zero to one. And That is actually the 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 reason why this is sort of an interesting concept. Like it looks like, oh, it's just so simple. It's just like a step function that goes up from zero to one. Why is that interesting? Well, it is interesting. And that's because most like people who do calculus would not think to do this. And there's a reason for that. It's because, um, yeah, I'm uploading. My, my audio is coming through. Everything's fine. Okay, I get um, The reason for that is that because it's a sharp turn, like it's a sharp corner, and calculus people don't, they don't like that because it's not a smooth, it, it doesn't uh, have a smooth derivative. And so this is actually not differentiable here. Like the, differ the derivative goes to infinity, it's like, I forget what you call that, but but the reason you can actually use this in Laplace transforms and in Fourier transforms, you can use these types of discontinuous functions. And heavy side was interesting for realizing that you can do that and by formalizing it too. And so this is like a switch has been flipped. So I guess when you're working with like tel telegraphers equations and like transmission lines and stuff, you often have situations where like a, a switch is flipped on or off. Or you have like a pulse, right? So there's something that's similar to the heavy side function that's called the um, the direct delta, and this one's really important. And this one's like just a pulse. It's just like a single line. It's like it's actually like infinitely tall. I mean, I guess normally it's drawn like this, and and then you make it thinner and thinner and thinner, so it gets infinitely thin. And it's like a limit that goes to to an infinite thinness, I suppose, uh, infinitely steep and tall. And so it's supposed to represent a pulse, a single pulse. And the heavy side function is a little bit similar. It's a step function. And so the derivative of the heavy side function, right, because it changes from zero to one instantaneously, the derivative will actually be a pulse. It'll be the direct delta function. And so the direct delta function, it looks like this. Let's do it in latex. equals oh oh 
hold on. I am somewhat forgetting the definition of the Derek Delta function. I need to pull that up. I don't want to like get it wrong, you know, and like tell however many people will watch this like <laughs> the wrong information. Oh, <laughs> it has a very um, complicated definition, actually. <laughs> yeah. So this is not. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I guess it's 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 like um, you can define it in terms of what it does. So it's like this. So you use it inside in terms of an integral. So integral from like let's say of like negative infinity. Hold on, let's check the stream. Let's check the stream. So let's pull up my latex actually. Put gimp away and pull up latex. Yeah. So. Let's go integral from in negative infinity to infinity. Oh, you need to put the, like this cancel up here. Yeah, this program is so convenient. You can really quickly type up scientific papers with this. It's like whoever put this together must have been a genius so. of the Dirac delta. So for the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the Dirac delta times a function like, let's say, f of x, dx, of course, don't forget your dx, or your teacher will, <laughs> will have, a, have a fit, so, actually, x equals f of x not, so, let's put, like, x, hold on. So, I actually have a problem. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. What was it again? Believe it, it's just delta. So I'm going to say text direct delta. It looks like this. Like that. Oh, compilation errors. What did I do wrong? Oh, oh, um, oh, there it is. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, something went wrong here. Let's just get rid of this for now. I believe I'm, I'm forgetting how to do that. So this down here is the direct delta. I just put it down here. See, is it showing up? Yeah, it is. Okay. So where my mouse is pointing, this is the direct delta function. And up here is how it's like used. So you put it inside an integral and it like selects one point in the integral and it decomposes the function at that point. Because remember it's zero everywhere except a single point. So if you integrate along a function, what it'll do is it'll select at that point of the function. And so it's like collapsing the integral. It's like, it's how you like decompose an integral. And so, um, the the heavy side function works a little bit similar so it's like so the heavy side function like the heavy side function um it goes from zero to one at x equals zero right so let's pull up GIMP again. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting used to doing this. It's like, I think I could do this a lot more effectively if I just practice a little bit more. Yeah, this is like x equals zero right here. It, it changes from zero to one. And, but you can adjust that, like, I'll show you how. So going back to latex. Right, so where did that? Oh yeah, so this will be mathcal h is the heavy side function. It's drawn with like this art that's like calligraphic s or h calligraphic. Is that like a a verb? <laughs> so of the heavy side function, it's just going to be 
it's just going to like neutralize the left side of the function. So it's just going to be like integral dx like this, but it's going to be from zero from x naught this time. So it's like, so see, we, we changed this bottom limit. Um, so that's, that's how it works. It like cuts off, it like sections off your integral. And the reason why that's useful is because, well, I didn't prepare quite enough to go into it, but you can use that with the Laplace transform. Um, and it, I, I suppose I'd have to like provide some background to the Laplace transform and everything. Um, but today I'm, I'm leaping right into the heavy side function because that's like the origins of my name. I was like, well, what's like a, a masculine name that's related to math, right? I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess, you know, heavy side, it's like, he's like heavy, you know? And so the reason why, why this is kind of funny is, right? Because the heavy side function, the step function, so it goes from zero to one. And so it's almost like it has a heavy side. <laughs> like this side is like heavy, you know, it's like being weighed down, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's it's all in the name, I suppose. And going back to latex, hmm, yeah, I can I can do this pretty nicely. So the the derivative of the heavy side function is going to be the direct delta. So if we go to right. oh, <laughs> what just happened? Oh, how do I? Oh, um, well, yeah. So the, the, these two arrows up here that I'm clicking, perhaps I should have said it sooner. These two arrows are how you compile this program. So this is like a program. It's, it's giving the compiler information on what to produce on this side. And so this recompiles my program and then prints it. And this, the single arrow, it prints the, it prints the output without like recompiling the whole program. There's like a subtle difference between those, I suppose. I'm not quite sure exactly all the differences, but that's basically, you, you, you just press the double arrows. That's just how you do it, so. It's actually like the derivative of this. Is going to be a heavy or the derivative of the heavy side is going to be a direct delta. So it's going to be like... Actually, I think that there's a different... No, no, that's the right symbol. Yeah, so it's going to be a direct delta. Do you see what I'm saying? The derivative of the heavy side is the direct delta. Um, I'm actually going to look that up just to make sure I'm 100% correct about that. Yeah, there's always a danger that you could like give bad information and you don't want to have bad information out there so yep yep i'm right yeah the derivative so and that makes sense because the step function changes all in a single moment and the derivative is the change in the function so it changes all in one moment so it changes in an instantaneous uh, I guess, peak. Yeah. So that is the origins of my name, the heavy side function. And someday, <laughs> someday, perhaps I will have a function named after me. <laughs> a little bit arrogant to say that, but I'd love that. Wouldn't you want to have like a function named after you? That'd be so cool. So the Laplace transform is, I suppose the Fourier transform is like more powerful. Here it is. The Fourier transform is like more powerful, but yeah, basically you can, if you do the, the Laplace transform of a heavy side function, um, you get um, another function that's in like the frequency domain. So, so as you can see, we're integrating over. In this case, we're integrating over t, right? 
and so our output is actually and this is a um this is not this is a, a definite integral so the, the t's are going to be decomposed out of a function and the integral goes to is going to be in terms of s and so the function that we get out is going to be a function of s as you can see here it's the laplace transform of f is going to be a function of s so <laughs> i'm actually like looking where my mouse is oh oh i was pointing in the wrong <laughs> i was pointing at my uh my, like obs setup and it was like putting my mouse way over here okay now i'll point at the curve so these it's a definite integral as you can see and so the output is going to be a function of s so it's the laplace transform of f is a function of s and so what you can do then is you can do you get a function of s out and then you can do algebra on that function and then do like the what's called the inverse laplace transform and so it's a way of like solving integrals through algebra an algebraic solution of an integral um hmm yeah, the, the Laplace transform is, is very powerful. Um, I suppose it's not, it's a little bit of, um, it's useful mostly for certain problems, for linear equations. Um, and there's a reason for that. I, I don't want to get into that today, but there's a reason why the Laplace transform, why, why in general, we as humans can only really solve linear differential equations. It's sort of an unfortunate limitation that we're stuck with with our current math. I, I've, of, I've often been like, man, maybe if, if only I could like figure out how to solve this nonlinear equation, like it would be like a major breakthrough. But we literally don't know how to solve most of them without like obscure substitutions. And I mean, you could solve like a couple of them. You can get like solutions in terms of um, like approximations. So like a Taylor series solution. Yeah, so... So, I guess what inspired the development of this type of stuff... It seems that Heaviside was inspired a lot by Maxwell. Maxwell's equations. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. They're very, very famous. They're considered like the most perfect equations in physics, basically. Yeah, Maxwell's equations are a big deal, so... Actually, I might just look those up. And then, like... Hold them up. That's actually a good, like... Thing to, like... Because I want to be able to, like, pull stuff up on stream, so this this will be a good way to practice for that. Maxwell's equations. I'll search for... Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get an image. So these are like the culmination of many, many, many different scientists working over many, many years to produce this series of like extremely perfect equations that are just, they're like, I, I can't believe that they exist, honestly. Like their existence kind of defies imagination almost. Like, how is, how can something that perfect or that like, convenient it's it's almost it's so convenient that it's almost like like the universe is telling us something <laughs> like well it's also so convenient that it's almost like maybe this is wrong right because it's it's too convenient oh geez am i still uploading hold on i definitely have to check that periodically yeah still uploading so i will actually just screenshot this because it's not opening up the image unfortunately Oh man, this is a little bit low res. Who cares? Time is of the essence. Oh yeah, and I can just put this right into my folder. And I can just scroll over. Yeah, this is, this is genius. So these are Maxwell's equations. These are Maxwell's equations. So they, they have two forms. On the right... Oh jeez, it's so low res. Oh well. I'm low res, right? I'm all scruffy because I turned off anti-aliasing. Well, I'm a PNG right now, anyway. So anyway, these are... The, the, the top is Gauss's Law. And then this middle one is a little bit... This was, like, added at the end. It's, like, the, one of the, 
the weird ones. Uh, Maxwell's equation, or uh, Faraday's equation here. So this is like a change in, uh, a change in the electric field produces a magnetic field, actually. And a change in the magnetic field produces an electric field. And Ampere's law. Yeah, yeah, Ampere's law is, it's a little bit like Gauss's law, but for magnetism. Um, anyway, so the differential form over here of these equations is, it's like, how do I, how do I say it? Um, it's kind of like, so these, these are like volume integrals, right? These integrate through an entire volume, um, or an entire surface in this case, or like across, a, around a, a boundary, like around a line in this case. It's like you're drawing like a line through free space, like a closed line. That, that's what this means. It means a closed integral. And this means like a closed volume. So this is the, it looks like a double integral, but it's actually a triple integral. This is just how we designate like a volume integral. And so it's an integral through an entire volume of space. And this over here is what like the differential element of that integral is. It's like what's happening at the elementary, elementary level. And so using this, I can, it's just a different formulation that you can use to prove stuff. So like I can use the, um, what is, what is that called again? The, this thing, I forgot what that was called. Oh, geez, can't believe I forgot that. The, the Dell oper no, it's not the Dell operator. Oh, I can't. I, I need to remember that. It's using vector calculus. Oh yeah, it's called the the gradient. No, 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 no. The gradient is an operator that we can do with it. Okay. Oh man, that's gonna bug me if I can't remember the name of that. Oh, it's, I think it's just called grad. No, no, no. I'm wrong about that. Nabla? <laughs> Nabla, is that really what it's called? I think we had a different name for it. The Greek symbol is called Nabla. So we're just calling it Nabla today. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look this up after, afterwards. Yeah. So Nabla, <laughs> it's not Nabla, that's wrong, but Nabla of dot E um, is like a mathematical differential element that you can like plug into these equations over here. So like, I can plug this differential element into the integral here, and like do stuff with it. So anyway, the to translate between these two sides, that's like what heavy sides innovation was was all about is like how do, how do we build these differential forms into bigger into the integral forms and so that's sort of the use of the heavy side function i'm not sure i believe it's mostly used in like telecommunications and certain proofs for like differential equations but this was a, like motivated the innovation, I suppose, Maxwell's equations. When people saw Maxwell's equations, they were like motivated to work on this type of math, I suppose. And that's what inspired a lot of our modern world. Like, um, a lot of our modern technology was inspired just by how beautiful these equations are. Like, how beautiful it is to have something like a single operator. Um, what is it called? The, the it's not called Nabla. It's it's actually an operator. As we spoke before, this invokes a change upon E. So E is like a vector field. It's like a field in space filled with with lines. So I suppose I can go into. I suppose most people like that would watch a stream wouldn't be familiar with like super high level math. So they would be like. A little bit mystified by what I'm saying, but I suppose 
basically, I'm repeating myself. I should just look up the vector field. Yeah. I will save this to my folder. There we go. Here it is. No, <laughs> it doesn't have a background. But yeah, this is like a field of lines. And so each point of the vector field gives you information on which direction the vector at that point is pointing. So like where, so like my equation will tell you where the vector here is pointing and where the vector here is pointing, where the vector here is pointing. And this fills all of space. And when you invoke a transformation on that, you're, you're basically getting a relationship between the nearby vectors. So it's like a derivative, like the equivalent of a derivative in three space. Um, that's what this is doing over here on the on the left. And so what Heaviside was involved with doing was seeing calcul in, um, calculus more in terms of transformations, like like interpreting the integral as a transformation upon a function that changes a function into a different function. That's one way to look at it. And that's what he was involved in doing. And as far as like how that relates to me, like <laughs> I don't think there's any um particular like meaningful like meaning behind it. Like like oh this represents my aspect or this represents my personality. But I just think it's a really cool name. <laughs> And it's, it's interesting how it literally has a heavy side, right? The heavy side function has a heavy side. <laughs> Such a funny coincidence. Like the universe, <laughs> the universe planned that. Um, let's see. Yeah, so. I guess transmission lines are really interesting. Um, the thing is, like signals are supposed to never travel faster than the speed of light, right? The speed of light is like the speed limit of the universe. Um, so signals in transmission lines are between like nearby particles, right? Like the electrons are su supposedly moving through the line, but the signal that they send is like a wave. It's like a, each electron pa uh, punches the electron next to it, which punches the electron next to it. And so it sends a signal. It's like a wave in a, in a pool of water. Um, and so the, the speed that it travels is actually not the speed of light. It's like half the speed of light. But because there is a transmission speed, um, well, I suppose I should talk about alternating current. So direct current, I guess I could like draw diagrams on. Hold on. Let's do a new layer. Let's make it like white. Is there a way to do that? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, a direct current is like the electrons are actually moving, right? So if this is an electron. It's actually like trans, it's actually like moving through the wire. All of them are, they're all like moving. But an alternating current is like they're moving back and forth, they're like wiggling. So this electron would move this way, then it would move back this way, and it would wiggle like that. And the one next to it would be pushed by this one's wiggle, and it would wiggle too. And so it wiggles back and forth too. Yeah, so they're both wiggling back and forth. But because it takes a little bit of time for the signal to transmit from this one to this one, um, there's a little bit of offset, right? So this one is wiggling at a frequency, but this one's frequency is a little bit offset. It's like 
a millis it's like a, a nanosecond later. And so that builds up, right? If you have like a long transmission line, you're like two miles down the road, dot, 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 two miles away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> People are gonna get mad at me for using miles instead of kilometers. Deal with it, deal with it. I use miles. Um, So this one's going to be like significantly offset. It's going to be like, like going literally like the other way when this one's going forward. And so that actually introduces a lot of difficulty and a lot of complexity into the situation, especially if you're dealing with like higher frequencies. But anyway, um, the thing is, like, high frequencies get attenuated very fast in, like, an electrical line. So, the electrical line has a lot of resistance. So, like, when we're drawing a circuit, suppose I can get, like, keep making new layers to, like, wipe away my mess. So, if you're drawing a circuit, the resistor is drawn like this. The resistor is... And this is, like, an inductor. Right? And then this is how you draw a capacitor. And then this would be a battery. A battery is drawn like a capacitor, sort of. Drawn like with a bigger top one. Yeah, like that. And usually it has like a voltage next to it. Um, and an alternating current is drawn with like a circle. See, where are the shapes? Like, can I draw a circle? Yeah, you know, like this? Select. And I fill it in. Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, oh, I see the problem. drawn like that. I'm not confident in my ability to draw a circle, so... <laughs> I, I think it's like up a little bit above or below. But anyway, th this is sort of the notation that they use for an alternating current. So the current in an alternating circuit moves back and forth like fast. And the reason why that's good is because this resistor here, um, the resistance is sort of proportional to like how, how fast the current is moving. So how fast the electrons are moving through the wire. Because they're encountering atoms when they move. They like hit atoms. They're like hitting particles when they move. And that creates resistance, right? But if they're wiggling back and forth, they're not hitting as many atoms as they move. Especially if the voltage is higher. Um, so I suppose in a heavy side, heavy side saw, like a, a signal... What is it called? A, a stepwise function, a step signal. What happens is that high currents get attenuated more. So like a very high um, frequency current would get um, completely blotted out by the friction within the wire. Whereas a low, I guess I could draw like, like a high frequency current. So if this is like, this is like the current is going forward backward so forward backward there's like alternating if it, a very high frequency in the line would get attenuated but a low frequency like that would not and so the heavy side function is actually one of the proofs that that is fundamental to like Fourier analysis is the fact that all functions, no matter what they look like, even the heavy side function, can be made up of as a sum of sines and cosines, right? So, like if you add up enough of these sines and cosines, like a longer one, and like a really fast one, 
if you add them up in a certain pattern, you'll get the heavy side function out. And so what happens is when you put the heavy side function into your voltage here, it'll transmit the signal, but it'll treat it as if, as if it's like a bunch of independent signals corresponding to the Fourier frequencies, and it'll attenuate the high ones. So it'll get rid of the high ones. And so you end up with something that looks neutered. It looks like this, right? Not like a real heavy side function where it's like sharp. It looks like this. It looks like kind of like rounded off, right? That's what um, resistance does to your, to your circuit in the wire. And yeah, I'm going a little bit like scatterbrain right now. I'm going into various stuff without like properly tutoring and teaching it, but that's kind of, it's fine. I think, I think I like rambles like this are fine. If I were to do like an actual like tutoring, I need to have more, I need to have like a plan prepared. I need to go into this and then this and then this, and that would be very important. So I could like set those up and I could like publish videos and like edit videos that are like tutoring people on on all this stuff. Um, yeah. So you can imagine like over here you start out with like a sharp heavy set function and by the, by the time it gets over here <laughs> it looks like a, it, it's actually not like that. It's actually more like I don't think it's like um I think the entire circuit responds at the same time. Like, if you try to put in this function, it would turn into this, like, immediately. It wouldn't, like, it doesn't, like, drain as it goes around. Because the entire, because these ones are pushing backwards on these ones over here. So you get some feedback that would turn, like, the signal even over here on the wire into, like, this neuter thing. Um, you could get this sharp stepwise function in a superconductor because superconductors have zero resistance but in a, in a traditional circuit you can't um so, so the heavy side function is more like a mathematical approximation or a sharp stepwise change in your signal it's not something that's like actually ever happens because any sharp change in reality has like a time delay to it that's like a uh, a dt here a uh, uh, signature time. I need like delta. I have to like search it on Google. I don't know the like Unicode representation for delta. Delta symbol. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> That's DT. So there's like a characteristic time to any like change in your signal. And that characteristic time depends on like your circuit. So it's like a little bit of, I guess, inefficiency or lag in your circuit. So in terms of signal analysis, the DT quantity is kind of important. Man, I really hope the stream is live. I guess I got the recording, so. If I had, like, <laughs> if I had people in my chat, I could, like, be answering questions and, like, going into specifics and clearing up confusion. But as it stands, I'm just doing sort of an extemporaneous ramble about things that I'm, like, interested in. So. Like, I'm not like, uh, <laughs> not like a heavy side fanboy, not like a into his whole life story and stuff. It's just a name that I chose for myself. Think about choosing like Maxwell or something. Yeah. I'm going to look up Maxwell's equations. I'm like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is begging for money again. So, so donate, you guys. Donate. 
Yeah, they're actually explaining things on Wikipedia much better than they did before. Um, before, whenever I'd go to like a Wikipedia page, it would be like some really thick jargon that nobody could understand. And now it looks like they're explaining it like in very clear terms, like every word, every word that they're using is meaningful, so. Yeah. The interesting thing about Maxwell's equations is that each of these equations represents like a law that was discovered independently. Oh, let's turn on my images here. Go to Maxwell's. So each of these was discovered like independently. But then when you throw them all in the same package, um, you get a series of equations that are all 100% in alignment with each other and they're all very necessary and they're all like kind of relate to each other. And so you can like combine them to create very interesting effects and I will definitely want to do that one time, one time on stream. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but that's not today. Today is mostly um, playing around with getting my BGM working and getting my um, my whole um, setup working with like latex and GIMP and everything. I've written some interesting papers in latex. I love I love writing like latex papers. Oh, let's close GIMP. I love writing these. Because you can write them like almost as fast as you could type normally. It's so like intuitive. I remember um, in college, I didn't know. I was like assigned to write one of these papers. And I just, I had no experience working with, with uh, latex at all. So I was completely lost. And even though it's so simple and intuitive, I was like intimidated. I was like, I don't have time to learn a new program. Like, I have so many classes, like, I don't have time to learn an entirely new program. So I was super frustrated, but I should have had more confidence in myself. I should have been like, yeah, I could, it's easy, like, you just type in the commands, like, it's super easy. So. Hmm. Let's see, in terms of... In terms of like my plan, I think what I want to do is rather than having like crazy rambles where I go like all over the place, I need to have like a structure where I focus on a single topic and go through it in a procedural manner. I think that would be a lot more helpful, a lot more useful to people. And I don't know if I'm allowed to, like, help people with their homework. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's even, like, allowed. Like, there might be rules against that, so... I'll have to, like, look into that. But otherwise, I could do that. Hmm. <sighs> I tend to like to talk faster <laughs> when I'm when I get into it, you know. I tend to get really animated. I don't know if I if there's anything else to talk about the heavy side function. It's very simple. It's just a step function. Um I guess I could talk a little bit about like electrical transmission lines. Um, one of the big issues is that um, electrical lines are a little bit inefficient in terms of like transmitting electrical power over over distance. And so I think it's like um, 50 miles to 100 miles where they like, they lose half their energy. Electrical signals lose half their energy. And so we cannot actually effectively transmit power over long distances, even with very high voltage lines. Like, 
it's a it's an engineering difficulty that we're currently stuck on in our in our world today um and discovering uh superconductors like superconducting lines would completely remove that and so in, if you had superconducting lines what you could have is instead of local power generation um you could have like a single power station that runs your entire country like you could just set up a, a massive a field of solar panels in like Nevada or something and pipe the power everywhere in the country from there. And that would be like super convenient, but we don't have superconductors yet. So we can't do that yet. Um, unfortunately. And there's so many other things that superconductors would change, of course. But yeah, um, I guess I could talk about, I guess I could talk about, um, Let's go to my camp here. Let's get a new, like, player. So, um, the amount of energy that you lose through a resistor. Let's, let's talk about energy. Uh, power of resistor. I want to get the formula right. You always Google it if you want to get it right. Relying on your memory is not always... <laughs> I mean, especially my memory. I believe it's I squared over R. It's V squared over R. Yeah, it's I squared R. But actually, when I, when I, one thing that I could do is I could like type that up in here. So I squared R. You could type that up in latex. Execute it. Screenshot it. Is this like an efficient way to do it? <laughs> Probably not. And then I could pull it up in GIMP. I could go like, oh wait, is this showing on? on... Okay. okay, this is not showing. Okay. Wait, even if I drag it over here? Okay, it hides that window. So yeah, I could just go to, I could go to here. Here we go. Yeah, I could pull it up. So this is definitely not efficient. <laughs> this is not efficient at all. So I'm not going to do this in the future. Um. Oh, I just closed my GIMP. Uh-oh. Yeah, I just closed it. Unfortunate. Oh wait, I could just reopen it, huh? Yeah. Wait, file new. All right, is that showing? Nope. I have to like rehook it in. So. Go to Kim. There. That one. There it is. All right, so I'm gaining experience. I'm like improving every day and I'm gaining a lot of experience on how to do this efficiently. It's currently a little bit scuffed, but let's let's get back into this. So what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so. There. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit small, isn't it? So I squared R, this is um, power. This is like the amount of energy that you lose through a transistor. Or through a, uh, a resistor, I mean. Energy. Energy. Energy lost. Um, 
and so every single location on a power line is technically a resistor right because a power line is made up of of atoms and so those atoms have resistance so it's like the entire thing is like a resistor but but on our circuit diagrams what we do is we just draw a circuit as if it has no resistor and then we'll just add a little bit at the end we'll see like oh this is net resistance this is like i this is like r little r usually um and that's like the resistance of the power line itself and it's re represented as a resistor we draw it as a resistor at the end but technically um the resistance is everywhere throughout the line and so these like electrons when they move they're not moving in like a in like a single direction they're not moving in like a straight line they're actually like bouncing around actually like a little bit wiggly and bouncy and in fact i believe if i'm not mistaken um, they're not even technically just moving in one direction they're like bouncing around kind of like kind of like the molecules in the air around us they bounce up down to the side they bounce like in multiple different directions but as a group statistically they tend to move one direction and that's what we feel on our face as wind. So the, the atoms in the air are actually like bouncing around like like hundreds of miles an hour. They're crazy, right? They're just bouncing all over the place. But as a group, this one has like an average velocity of like one meter a second that way. But their group movement on average is to the to the to this direction. And so I feel that as like wind on my face. The group movement and so um it's similar in like an electrical circuit like these electrons are going wiggling in multiple different directions but as a group statistically they tend to move this direction more than this direction and so that's a current we feel that as a current and yeah this is the amount of energy that you lose in the line and so well, I, in a, I guess in a, um, this is where we get into some complexity, but let's just talk about an L, R, um, an R circuit, an R circuit. So there's no capacitor, there's no inductor, just an R circuit. So take typically V equals I R. Typically, of course, in um, a more complex circuit, you'd have like inductance and stuff, but we're not dealing with that right now. So if you plug, so what is I? I equals V over R. So if you plug V over R into here, what are you going to get? You get V squared over R. V over R. How do I do that without like... Hmm. I'll go back to latex. So V squared... And imagine if you could develop like a latex plugin for a game. I would like, you could type this stuff out in latex. Or in GIMP, I mean. That would be so good. Okay. There we go. So V squared over R is, is also the energy. And so as you can see, um, this V squared on top, um, oh, wait. <laughs> I know, no, no, this is, this is the wrong analysis. So anyway, over here, energy loss is I squared over R. So if you can reduce the current the energy lost goes down tremendous. It goes down by a squared quantity, right? And so what you do is you up your voltage, to like insane levels, through a uh, trans transit uh, trans. <laughs> What's it called? Oh no, I'm I'm failing. Oh. Uh, 
transformer. <laughs> how, did, how did I forget that? So anyway, a transformer like boosts your voltage, and it'll take a um, current that was like at a very low, at a very high current, but low voltage, and it'll turn it into high voltage, low current. But it has like the same energy. And so when you pass the high voltage, low current through your line, your current is lower, so you're losing less energy by squared, by a squared quantity. And so you can actually transmit power over long distances that way. So what you do is you use a transformer to step up your your voltage to like super high voltage, transmit it through over very big, like long overhead lines, to like a distant location, and then you step it back down again. You can do that with a transformer. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think I could explain that right now. I need to do like a tutorial on how like transformers work, but that's like the concept. You get conceptually how that works. Um, yeah. I suppose one of the people who, who came up with all this stuff is just heavy side. I know he wasn't the guy, but he was just one of those people, you know. And I'd love to be one of those people. <laughs> I think you should too. You know, this is where it's at. This is this is why we have what we have. I wonder if I could do like I'm no good at art, but I can like draw stuff on stream maybe. He's a sad guy. Now he's eating something. Hmm. All right. Well, I, I suppose that's all I could do on the heavy side function. Um, there's really not much content there because it's literally just a step function. <laughs> As far as the history of like Heaviside himself, kind of interesting, you know, his background coming from like a, a poor family. We're well, not poor, but like middle of the road family. And then becoming like this legendary scientist. There's a couple of stories like that, you know. I guess anyone can can do that, so. Just gotta work hard. See, I'm I'm gonna like start up my face tracking again. And I'm gonna try to like close out the stream. I don't know how long I've been streaming. Oh it says it says I've been going for like over an hour. Okay. That's good then. I thought I was like short on time. I was like, oh. So let's Okay. Shoot. <laughs> oh shoot. That's such a like bad error to have. Hold on a minute. I gotta get my like my my model animated. the command oh yeah look at me the Linux user <laughs> using commands starting up. So I guess today I'm very, um, 
I'm much more well rested, like the day before. And I was just tired. Like super tired. Oh shoot. <laughs> Wait a minute. So if I go back here. Oh dear. If I go back here. Oh, it's still it still has my model for some reason. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's working. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, look at that. Working. All right, well, I guess now you know a little bit about the heavy side function. This super cool mathematical function that everybody should know about. And I talked about the direct delta. And I talked about transmission lines. And I got my whole setup working this time. It's amazing. It's amazing how long it took to set up, but I'm, I'm glad that it works. I'm glad that it all came together. So, yeah, I guess now that I have my setup working, I can start working on you know, other stuff. I can get my Twitter profile all nice. Now that I actually have something worth watching, I can like advertise it, you know? Go like talk to people, Twitter, and tell them about the stream and stuff. So I think this was like more of an advanced tutorial. So math has like several levels. So there's like the very basic level of like the primitive functions like multiplication, addition, subtraction, that sort of thing. It's like the most primitive level. And then there's sort of a mid level where you're using like algebra. And then there's the more advanced level, I'd, I'd call it like advanced, where you're using calculus. And then there's advanced calculus, where you're using like um, differential equations and stuff. And the highest level that I've gotten to is complex analysis. That's what I forgot yesterday. I forgot the name of it. Complex analysis is really, that's what like Feynman was using. And that's the most advanced level, I think. Maybe there's like a level higher that I don't know about, but. So if I want to be like an effective tutor, I really have to go through it like one step at a time. So I can have like a day where I go through like the very simple level and then get more advanced and then get more advanced over time. And I might just do that actually. I might have like an entire series. I might do like, oh, I don't know, like, Either one, one tutoring stream a week, or I could do like a session before every stream, you know, like here's what I learned today, or like here's something interesting today. And I might like bring up like problems on stream too. So, all right. I'll close it out. <laughs> when I lose the tracking, I look so, so derby. I was so like <laughs> unanimated. All right. Well, um, thanks for stopping by if you did. And um, welcome to the heavy side. Or I, I suppose it's not proper to say welcome because I'm saying goodbye. So I'll say like heavy side out. Heavy side out.